Hello everybody and welcome to the second part of my Blender to Train Sim tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to sort of start create, collecting information and start looking into how you would model um, for Train Simulator. So, before you do anything, I recommend you create a test route in Train Simulator. Now, I've, I've, already, I've already opened my game, I had to mute my game. Just so it doesn't get annoying for anybody. But if I click build. You can see I've got a few routes. Um, but if I click new route. Name. Uh, vid. Test. Route. Now. The actual sort of information in this doesn't matter. The name obviously doesn't matter. Um, none of this matters. However. I do advise you use the North London and Goblin line as a basis for your route. If you do not have the North London and Goblin line, I recommend you buy this route for before you try any modelling at all. And I'll explain why if we scroll down to it. Uh, vid test route. There we go. Edit. I'll explain why when the, uh, when the thing's loaded. So, if I jump back across... Uh, to my iCloud, you'll see this is the model that I want to do. The first step to creating any model is obviously to find the model. Work out what you want to create. Have you got something specific in mind? Like, obviously you're probably building a specific route, so are there any specific assets or models that you like? If you're building a fictitious route, is there anything you want to base your models off of, sort of thing? So find something realistic, or so find something in the real world that will help you base your model off of something. Uh, secondly, go out and take pictures of that model. The best, best way to get any sort of information about anything is to take your own pictures. You can use Google, you can use YouTube, you can use Google Maps. You know, all of these are perfectly reasonable um, resources which you can use um, in order to create an asset. But the best way to get the exact pictures you want is to take a picture of that, of that particular item yourself. And as you can see, I have already done so. Um, I've already gone out and taken a couple of pictures of this sign from different angles. Just to give you sort of an idea of, of how they uh, how they sort of go together, uh, you want to get as much information as you can of as uh, as you can as possible about this particular item you're going to be making. Also, I have found the item I'm going to be making on Google Earth, as you can see uh, on Street View, so I know exactly. I've got you know I've got everything I need to sort of thing. Has our game loaded our test tree? Yes, it has. Now, the reason I say use the North London and the Goblin line, so if we go into miscellaneous, press A. If you didn't know, you can click on any random asset, hit a letter, and if there's a if there's a set of assets under that first letter to start with, it will it'll instantly take you to that letter. So if you know what you're looking for, you're looking for something from the Goblin line, I can press G and it will take me to Goblin line assets. Um, but for this one, we're going to want this assist ruler. Now, Train Simulator by default does have a ruler built into it, which we can use up here, measure tool. And you can see we can drag it around, and this is great. This is great because you can go a really long way. The, the, the ruler is, is limited on how far you go. However, the one thing that the measure tool cannot measure is upwards. And upwards is just as important as lengthways. So, yes, I, I do recommend it. Also, with these. Um, you can copy and paste them, put and line them up next to each other, and you'll know this distance here is actually 120 meters because I've got two rulers um, lined up almost exactly on the, six, on the 60 mark. Again, you could do the same with stacking them upwards. So, in order to work out the size of our model, bearing in mind that most of the time when you're modeling something for train sim, you're not going to have a diagram for it. You're not going to have any kind of drawings or often no measurements that you can actually use to create something. So how are you going to work out realistically how big it is? Well, you want to try to use references. If I go back to my photos that I have taken here, you will see that there are a couple of things that we could potentially measure this, uh, this object against. For example... You can see we have bricks. 
Bricks are normally a pretty standard size. Obviously, I'm not saying all bricks are the same, but some bricks, you know, you, you could use the bricks as a rough idea as to how tall the object is. Also, if you look at this, bearing in mind, obviously, perspective exists, this sign is probably just shorter than that car, to be honest. It's probably probably around here on the car. So, you, you, you sort of got an idea of how of how big it is. What if you don't know the size of a car or a brick or something? Well, this is where the assist ruler comes in. We can jump in. We can grab any random bridge that we find. And it should give us a rough idea of how big a brick is. Now, I'm not saying the scale on these items is perfect. Don't take anything as concrete. But it should give you an idea. That's all you want, an idea. It doesn't necessarily have to be inch by inch perfect. Just have to get have a rough idea as to how tall something is. So, how many bricks are behind this sign? Let's have a count, shall we? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 bricks. Count them in the game. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so the scale's a bit big in this one. Uh, so maybe the bricks aren't a great, a great thing to use. But we could also try a car. Now, if I have a car, think, fingers crossed I have a car. Yes, I do. Is that a similar size to the vehicle that's on the uh, on the Google Maps? It's, it's it's not bad, I guess. We sort of want a um something closer, something like this, maybe. That's probably about right. You can see the back of the car. You can, you can, you know you can measure you can measure stuff up, sort of thing. Uh, the back of the car is one point one meters tall. I would say. I would say just by looking at it, it's probably about one meter tall. It's probably just over one meter. So I'm going to conclude, therefore, that the sign, the, the longer leg of this sign is 1.1 meters tall, based on the fact that the, the rear of this car is at 1.1 meters. Therefore, I should be using that as a baseline for my model in the game. So now we can start the exciting bit of actually modeling our object. First of all, Obviously, you have your uh, your basic um, basic blender uh, palette. You're not going to want the camera, and you're not going to want the light. Most of the time, you probably also aren't going to really want this cube. However, I'm going to keep the cube because I can use it to model the leg. And again, I'm going to sort of show you how to uh, how to get about sort of starting to model stuff. So I'm going to click the plus here. That brings up all our transform options. Dimensions will come down to. We'll set it to 1.1 meters tall. You can see the scale is 0.55 meters tall. The width of the legs. This is another question. If we run back to this. I would say them legs are probably about 0.1 uh, meter wide. Basic guess. Maybe 0.2. Looking at them might be 0.2. Is there any sort of reference we can use? Uh, sort of the width of that bush maybe. There's a, there's a similar bush. Um... There's a similar bit of grass um, that I can think of. Uh, I don't have access to that bit of grass, which is a nuisance. Uh, you could al al always add it, of course. You could always add um, the possibility, but that's probably about a similar distance. Okay, probably not, but... Okay, so I found a stem that's sort of reasonably close to the, the, the same sort of size. If we use that one, you can see it's about 0 0.1 1 meters tall. Uh, wide, sorry. So I'll jump back across to here, and I'll use 0 0.1 by 0 0.1. The one thing I will say, don't be afraid to use assets that exist. Don't copy assets that exist. Don't do that. But don't be afraid to use them as reference. Uh, there's a lot of good assets out there which can be used uh, for reference on certain bits. Especially people. I always use people as a, uh, as a nice reference. People... Sort of, I sort of assume that the average height for a person is about 1.8 meters. If you've got a door, doors generally they tend to be about 2 meters tall. So there are a few objects you can use here. Next up, you want to position your object. We know this is the size of our basic leg. We're going to want to position our object in the world. Now, as you can see, there's a grid here. This grid marks the base, marks where the height of the ground is in Train Simulator. It correlates directly to it. So we want this pole to sit exactly on top of this grid. How do I do that? Well, in this particular case, 
I can grab this option and do that. I might not be able to if I've changed the uh, the scale of the object. Uh, and I'll show you how to sort of do all that later. But, so for argument's sake, we don't know what this scale is. This scale was, says it's wrong. The We know the height, however. We could do that. We could do divided by 2. And that gives us gives us our height. Because obviously you've got um, half of your height goes above and half your height goes below. Blender can perform mathematical functions. So you can, you don't have to work something out externally in order to be able to work it, work out what you need to be doing with it. Okay, so next off, we probably want to work out how wide our sign is. Um, now you can see our sign is a few bricks uh, wide. Again, you can't really use the bricks as uh, as the as sort of the uh, the baseline here. Uh, we could use that same plant though. If we sort of imagine that plant uh, to sort of be multiplied a couple of times. Um, or even the poles. You could try and me mentally multiply the poles a couple of times. Now, I reckon that's probably about a meter in between the, uh, in between the poles. But we could, we could have a look at the bricks and see how the bricks in, in game sort of measure up. So what I'll do, I'll create a new ruler. I'll bring it on the side of the light. You can rotate these rulers, obviously. So that's, that's pretty decent. Oh, that's not great. Okay. The side isn't great to use. We will use the front instead then. I'll rotate the ruler by about 90 degrees. Line it up a bit more. If you hold shift, you can uh, get more fine rotation on a uh, object within the game. Okay, yeah, the bricks are horrendously um, out uh, off size in in on this particular asset. So, yeah, te textures can be a bit funny. Uh, I I wouldn't. I wouldn't normally recommend using textures. Sometimes they're alright to use, other times they're not. I reckon that's about a meter, a meter in between. Uh, so we're going to assume that that is. Sometimes you can guess stuff mentally, other times you've got to actually work it out. The other thing you could do is turn on a Google, Google Maps overlay. Now obviously this route isn't going to be anywhere near the station that I want it. See, it's Swanley. So nowhere near Turkey Street where this sign is located. Uh, but if you've got, if say you were modelling this house, for example, and you wanted to know how big it is, uh, just slap your ruler down. You can see it's about mm, trying to cap, trying to sort of ignore the roof and take the bottom measurement. It's about fourteen meters wide by. Okay, so we haven't got a good reference point. If we take the front of the roof to the back of the roof, we've got about we've got about nine meters. So it's about fourteen by nine meters, and then you just got to work out your height. So you can use Google Maps overlay in order to work out some things. For now, I'm going to assume that this uh, particular particular item is a uh, one meter. So how do we do this? What do we do? Well, basic fun basic keyboard functions: copy and paste. Uh, Control C, Control V will do your copy and paste. You can see I've now got two objects. Um, I can now shift them across. Uh, so. If I reckon it's about one meter between the two poles, if I divide that by two, I've got 0 0.5 meters either side. So I can move this one. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which axis it is. I think it's that one. Yes, it is. I'll move that one 0 0.5 that way. And 0 0.5 in the negative. Bearing in mind, we've got a 0 0.05 gap. Sort of between the center of this object where the measurement's taken from and the actual end of the object. So if I add 0 0.5 to the end of that, you can do it mathematically or for this particular function, it's fine to do it like that. Then we've got the spacing of our poles. So if I go back to my image that I took uh, of the actual sign in real life, you'll notice there's these uh, these sort of funny looking shapes on the top. The, uh, the sort of the pyramid shape. Um, the way I'm going to go about doing them is jump back into Blender, go into edit mode. I'm going to select the faces down here, so I can select a single face, press delete on my keyboard, and delete the faces. After that, I will do a diagonal line across there, and create a face, and I do that using Control e If you do Control e that brings up this edges section. Before I make the face across, however, what I shall do is control E and subdivide that face. Now we have a central point. I can now control E between all of them to create a pyramid shape. 
And I'll just fill in these faces using the same thing, the same option. And that completes our object. Now, of course, I'd, ideally, you'd so, probably sort of want to um, copy this object afterwards. And I'll show you how, how I'd do that in a second. So, I'm, I actually measured the angle of this uh, when I was there, when I was taking a picture of the sign. The slope on this angle here is actually about 33 degrees, according to my phone. How are we going to make sure we've got 33 degrees? Well, you could do it mathematically, potentially, using uh, Pythagoras theorem and stuff. Or... Slightly more simpler option, if I spawn a brand new cube, centre the cube, and I shall find the direction I want. That's the direction I want. I shall add 33 degrees at an angle to it, centre the object uh, with this object that exists here. Zero. That's apparently moved forward, so I need to move that back. Uh, is that move forward? No, that's fine. Raise that up. And approximately, approximately line up, uh, line up these bits. Now, remember, obviously, there is a, there is a sort of, um, you could do it mathematically, work all this out properly and do it all, do it all thoroughly and everything. But the reality of it is, the average person in the game, who's playing the game, is just going to fly past this asset and not even take a second thought about how big, how big it is. As long as it looks realistic, it doesn't really matter the exacts of it. So I shall now approximately line this uh, up with the object. Let's round that up to a nice 5-9. You can, you can uh, sort of mess about with this a little bit as well if you want you can see that if i move this up point one we can see how well it matches so it's not quite not quite up enough yet point five it's not far off it's it's basically there if i do point two five try and get it just as close as i can again exact really don't matter um this is just me being uh being a bit funny over it so that is literally as close as I'm going to get it, I believe. I can now delete my cube. And we're left with that. Once again, delete my original object. Copy that object. And then quite simply all I do... Go up to the uh, the Y-axis. Change that around. And there we go. There's our object uh, uh, positioned the other side. Now we have our two poles, I shall make the uh, the sign, the front of the sign, and I'll show you a quick technique on how to make the front of the sign. Okay, so I've created my basic sign face as accurately as I can for the second. Uh, the sign face I can uh, easily sort of change about because when I start putting text on it, it become apparent uh, as to how I need to manipulate the face in order to make it look better. Now, you'll see on this sign, there are curved edges. How would we do a curved edge? Now, you could bevel, but the way I would do it is using cylinders. Personally, I spawn a cylinder, reduce the amount of faces to probably 18, I reckon. Uh, no, 369, 12. When we go 16, I'll, I'll show you the reason for it. Basically, we've got four faces each side. That will be that will become uh, useful to know later. Tip it over by 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Now we want to position our, our new cylinder... At as to where we'd want this uh, tapered corner, this cut-off corner. So if I come across, 
Uh, you could, again, all of this can be done mathematically. Uh, that looks like that would be 0. 0.65. Again, if we go up. 0. 0.99, so make that 1. That puts it exact. Uh, let's have another look. See if that corner being cut off is... It's probably about what we want. We might want it a little bit smaller, I reckon, for this asset. So we'll go... We'll half it. And we'll give it another test. Nope, zero five. You don't. You, it'll obviously become apparent if you've done, if you've missed a, a digit. There we go. That's probably closer to the the, the corner. They're very very small amount of the uh, the corner that's actually been uh, been cut off. So I reckon that'll do. Um, now what I would do is copy the cylinder and then make the width of this a bit wider. From here. We have a uh, an ob object which we can cut. So I'll find out what number this is. What's the name of this object? This not object is cylinder. That object is cylinder 01. Click the spanner icon. Boolean. Cylinder. Difference. Apply. Again, if you want to know how to use all these tools properly, uh, look at uh, tutorials on uh, YouTube. Because uh, this is just a basic sort of idea of how you'd go about creating certain models in the game. But anyway, I'm going to select these particular points. Delete that. I can now delete the rest of that. Create this into a uh, sort of completely covered full-sided shape. Uh, you want a complete mass on this shape. You don't want to leave any holes because then then the game does... The blender doesn't consider it a, an actual object itself. Now we have that itself. We can go down to our object, find out what that name is. Well, we, we want to find out that name. So that's cylinder 01. Find out that name. Cylinder 01. Difference. Apply. Delete. And now we have a corner cut out. Now, if you end up like this, uh, with an issue like that, you can uh, go and just add the faces afterwards. You can see we've got a nice sort of cornered, uh, we've got a nice shaped corner rather than a, uh, a block as we had before. What I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly undo that and I am going to move this object around the place, finding all of the different areas that need doing. 0 0.8, if we go, if we go 90, sometimes you, it might, it can be a bit off. To find out which way direction you want to move. So we could always go and do that. And that will set it all up for us. Go down to 180 on this angle. We want to come back up to probably 825 I imagine. Yep. Again, booling this corner with the exact same object we did before. And there we go. Another corner. I'll just do that for the other two ends off screen. And I'll just finish off the last face. And there you go. That's our that that's our sign complete again. The final thing I'm gonna do is uh copy this uh this sign, shrink it down a little bit, uh make it thinner, and that will become our front, as you can see here, because it's a slight slight different shape. Okay, so something else you might find is you end up with a uh object that looks a bit like this after you've booleaned it. Now, this one actually didn't do that, which I was quite pleased about. But, so I've created this line for our sort of demonstration purposes. But what you might find is that you get strange lines appearing. Uh, basically, if you've got lines appearing, that makes it really hard to try and uh, texture it properly later on. What that probably means is that you're trying to cut, you're trying to boolean from a point that is exactly on a line with the object you're cutting. Um... If the lines match, then you will get issues potentially. Um, I don't, not sure why I didn't in this particular instance, to be honest. But so what I recommend, rather than cutting at the exact point, cut 0 0.00001 higher than you have to, or something. You know, just a microscopic amount that nobody's going to know about or care about, but would just be enough to convince Blender that you're not trying to cut a line with a line. Because that doesn't work. You have to cut mass with a line sort of thing. Okay, also for an asset that you've cut beforehand. 
rather than trying to uh, sort of shape it, because as you can see, if you try and sort of change the size of it, it messes up your angles a little bit. You wrote cut earlier. And obviously we want it to be exactly parallel. So what I would do to solve that issue, I'd jump onto the asset. Uh, select all of the faces that you're going to want. Um, holding control to select. And then manually change each one. Um, again, it's a bit longer, but I should have thought that before I cut them. But it doesn't matter, because uh, if I move all of the faces of a particular area at the exact same time, uh, it means that I'm not going to end up with any sort of misshaping and all that sort of nasty rubbish that we don't really want to be honest uh that's wrong i can easily fix that issue that i created there by copying and pasting uh pasting that i picked up a line across there some re for some reason as well so if i delete the edge of that um what's okay what's going on here hang on i'm slightly confused okay so there were some really weird facing uh issues that i just had to fix there but but they're done now um yeah, you can you can fix stuff like that. You know, it's not impossible to fix it. So if we select um, all of these faces on the top now, again, 0 0.4, uh, 3, 2. No, that's wrong. That's probably... Yeah, is it? I don't know, actually. Okay, so I was trying to get rid of more than I needed to, but we can... Again, we can fix it. Um, 7, 2, no. 8, 0 0.1, I've decided. Nope, that's that's also wrong. So there we go. Yes, the best way to do it is to actually make your cuts after you shaped your shaped your asset. Um, which, like I say, I forgot about. So that's my bad. One final thing. Select the face on the back and delete that. Because nobody's going to see it. So it's not actually necessary to have it. Any faces that will be seen, you need to keep. But any faces that uh, you don't... That aren't going to be seen. Uh, they, they can be sort of removed uh, for optimization purposes so now we've got our sign built uh everything's ready we are actually ready to go on to the next step which will be texturing so i shall see you in the next video for that thank you very much for watching everybody and i will see you all next time goodbye